Hey, what's good, John Stinger Beats, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a break-ins hypnagogia type beat. So before I get into this tutorial, I want to say, forgive me if I seem a little bit unenthusiastic during this tutorial. I literally recorded this tutorial yesterday, and the audio was just fricked during the whole thing, so this is my second time recording it, <laughs> so that's always fun. Um, if you don't know who Breakins is, he kind of juggles around the realm of hyper pop and noise pop and in his own kind of synthy glitchy guitar kind of way. He's very unique in his own aspects. Uh, he's a very underrated artist. I definitely recommend you listen to him. So let's go over some key aspects that make a hypnagoja type beat. So the first one is going to be glitchiness. Whether it be in the melody, drums, uh, FX, or just all the above, you want some kind of glitchiness in there. That's what really makes or breaks a hypnagoja type beat. The second thing is going to be ambience. There's a whole lot of ear candy in hypnagogia type beats, just drumming on your ears and like giving you certain feelings that aren't really achievable with any other album. So you definitely want some kind of unique ear candy. And the third aspect is stereo separation, whether that be panning certain uh, parts of the melody to the left or the right, or using uh, panning automation, like with a plugin called Pancake, which I'm gonna be using. Um, you want some sort of stereo separation. So, without any further ado, let's hop into the tutorial. Alright, so here I have the beat. It's already been made, which is most likely what I'm going to be doing for most of my tutorials because they just flow so much smoother. It takes me like an hour to make a beat. I don't want to be recording for like an hour. so. This is a pre-made beat. So the first thing that I'm gonna be going over is the melody. So the first part of the melody is from Spitfire Labs, which is an amazing plugin. The preset that I'm using for this is two on the platform from the London Atmospheres section. It's really unique. I really like that section. So this is what the first part of the melody sounds like. So for this part of the melody, I just laid out a basic 1-4 chord progression and then arpeggiated it using Alt-A. Alright, and then for the next part of the melody, I used Spitfire Labs as well. This is the drone preset from the, granular, from the granular whale song section. This is what it sounds like. So for this part of the melody, I just copied down the basic chord progression that I had initially in the first part of the melody. This part of the melody really adds to the ambience that I described as the precursors for a hypnagogia type beat. So we've kind of got ambience down already. We still need a little bit more, but we've got a good basis. So for the next part of the melody, I've got Spitfire Labs yet again. Uh, I use this pretty much throughout the whole beat. Uh, it's a really good plugin for experimental ambient beats. Um, I'm using the Talking Whales preset from the Granular Whale Song section. And it's kind of just like some whiny lead type of thing. This is what it sounds like. Very ambient, very soothing actually. All right, for the next part of the melody, I just copied down the same arpeggio from the first part of the melody, but I used a different preset. I used the pluck synth from the OPS section from, you guessed it, Spitfire Labs. This is what it sounds like. All right, next I have this music box from Spitfire Labs. It's the Hannah Peels music box from the music box section. It's basically just mimicking the basic chord progression, but I just strummed it a bunch. This is what it sounds like. It kind of gives it like a vintage like music box feel, but I don't know. I really like the sound of music boxes because they're in Shrek 2. All right, next we have this glitch preset from Hive. It's the HS Digital Chaos with four S's. This is what it sounds like. It's basically just an ambience. It's not really a melodic component, but it's in the melody pattern, so I kind of had to cover it. Um, that just adds to the glitchiness, which we mentioned earlier, but yet again, 
we're not completely done with the glitchiness. And then next we have the Arc Moon Bell playing a nice little counter melody. Alright, and all together, this is what the melody sounds like. Now let's go over some mixing for the melodies to get those real glitchy aspects and components. So for most of the glitching in this, I used a really, really good free preset called Fracture. It has a bunch of really cool presets for glitchiness where if you turn down the mix, it's really subtle, but it definitely adds some ear candy. So for the first arpeggio, I used the preset Beam Slicer. With it all the way up, this is what it sounds like. And then with it turned down, this is what it sounds like. It just adds in those little like little thingies. I don't know what those are called. <laughs> just glitches, I guess. All right, and then for the music box, I have another instance of Fracture on the Northern Shadows preset. With it turned all the way up, this is what it sounds like. And then with it turned down to its original tuning, this is what it sounds like. Yet again, it's very subtle, but it definitely adds something. And then I have all of my melodies routed to one track, where I have a couple limiters for side chaining the kick, which we'll get into later. But what I want to cover is using OTT in every single one of my tutorials. I will probably cover this. Using OTT on all of your like components in the melody is severely underrated. This is what it sounds like without OTT. And then with OTT, this is what it sounds like. It just gives it a whole lot more like brightness, you know, it really just brings the melody to life. And then the last thing that I have for the melody is this frequency shifter. Uh, Breakins uses these a lot, even in his uh, album Punk 2. He uses frequency shifting a lot for the melodies. Just be sure not to overdo it because it can kind of get really irritating if it's overdone. And then for the frequency shifter, I used M frequency shifter, which is a free plugin. So if you want to get a frequency shifter, get this one. And I just automated the shift. So the melody with the frequency shifter sounds like this. And that's introducing another glitchy aspect. All right, now let's go over the drums. So for the bass, instead of just using an 808, I'm using this Hive bass called the HS Humor Plus. It's just following the bass notes. This is what it sounds like. And then on that bass, I have a little bit of fast distortion, some wider to give us some stereo separation. I know I'm kind of committing a cardinal sin by not putting my 808s in mono, but it's music, there's rules to break. And then I also put the low end up a little bit. And then I have this kick pattern that follows the 808. I'll say this all the time, the real clip kick is literally one of the best kicks that I've ever used. If I'm using a kick in a beat, and I try to use some other beat, none of them ever do as well compared to this one. So it's in the Rio, I don't know how to say his name, Rio Levia. I think that's how you say his name. It's in his 10K drum kit, definitely recommend. I literally use it in every single one of my beats. All right, next we have a hyperpop snare. I decided to introduce some hyperpop aspects into it, even though Hypnagoja doesn't really have any hyperpop in it, but I just decided to throw it in because I thought it sounded nice. All right, next I have this hi-hat. It's basically just playing straight half-step notes, except the velocity is varied a bit and there's a little bit of cutouts. This is what it sounds like. For the mixing on that, I just have um, Gross Beat on the Flanger 3 preset. And then I have some reverb with the dry almost all the way down. And I have Pancake 
with the mix down to 43%. Basically what Pancake does is it's a panning automation tool where it will like pan it from left to right very smoothly without you having to create like automation clips for it. And I also have this instance of Fracture with the ambient guitarist preset. Without any um, VSTs, this is what it sounds like. And then with it, it makes the hat very subtle, but also at the same time it adds to the atmosphere. All right, next I have this open hat that sounds absolutely nothing like an open hat because of all the effects I threw on it, but this is what it sounds like. It's kind of more like a like an impact more than an open hat. So to achieve that sound, I just threw D Blue Crusher on it. I don't know why it says D Blue Glitch. That's not D Blue Glitch. And just turned the reduction all the way up. I threw a little bit of fast distortion, some reverb, and turned the dry all the way down and the wet pretty much all the way up. Threw some delay and some chorus on it, cut out the lows. So all those effects basically just give it that little like stomping impact sound. And then next I just have a little break open hat that hits right before the downbeat. All right, and the last aspect of the drums is this little like glitchy bleep sound that I got from Splice that I just decided to use as a perk. This is what it sounds like. It kind of sounds like like water drops, but at the same time it's glitchy. It gives it like a sense of atmosphere, you know? So all together, these are what the drums sound like. Alright, next let's get into ambience and effects. So with these kind of beats, you want there to be a lot of variation. The arrangement can be pretty simple, but you want to be introducing new aspects every so often. And a great way to do that is to add in some kind of ambience or sound effects. My go-to for ambience and sound effects is probably Splice right now. So for the chorus, I have this little textural glitch thingy. And I have the stereo separation pretty much all the way up just to really fill it in your ears. And then I also have these two sound effects like right before the chorus ends. And I have this little alien texture that plays during the bridge. So with all the glitching and effects, this is what the chorus sounds like. side change the kick and the snare to the melody so whenever the kick hits the melody will drop and whenever the snare hits the melody drops all right so next let's get into the arrangement so the arrangement on this is stupid simple except for the intro i wanted the intro to be like super ear catching so what i did for it is i just added in parts of the melody like a normal intro but i also threw in this little glitchy sound i got that one from splice as well and then i also used I'm definitely gonna butcher how to say this. I don't know how to say this. A tremolo, tremolo, I don't know how to say that. I threw in, I'm just gonna say tremolo. I threw in a tremolo uh, VST, which is from that same company that made the frequency shifter. And I applied that to the glitch sound effect and the uh, melody. I also have this reverb to really make it sound small. And to add to the smallness, I turned the stereo separation down to mono and added an automation clip to gradually decrease that back to basic stereo separation. So for the tremolo, I just have it like gradually increasing so it'll go That's my best way to describe it. <laughs> so this is what like the, the end of the intro sounds like. definitely just like a huge huge build up to that really nice and soothing drop. So that's pretty much it for a break and hypnagogia type beat. If you have any questions please feel free to ask whether it be what VST I use for certain parts or how I achieve certain sounds or what drum kit I use. Please ask I will do my best to answer them. Also let me know if you learned anything new down in the comments below and if you did it'd be greatly appreciated if you liked or subscribed. 
Stay tuned for a new tutorial next week. See ya.